We're going to uh, go into Matthew 2 again and finish some things that we were looking at last uh, Lord's Day morning, uh, preparing us for Christmas time, uh, the season that we're in uh, right here and, and right now. Uh, I just appreciated so many of uh, just all of the uh, hymns and songs that we were singing, how they're foking, uh, focusing us in on the Lord, uh, the... Uh, the story that we were able to listen to did the same exact thing, focusing us in on the Lord and who He is in our lives. Just all has drawn us to that point this morning, and which it should. Our worship should be around the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we elevate all that He is, the Father is well pleased with that. And last week, uh, as we, we covered uh, Matthew 2, uh, about verses 1 through 10. We're going to pick up and, and hit verses 11 and 12 uh, this morning, but I think maybe we need a little bit of refreshing to remember what all last week, Sunday morning, uh, was about. A brief version, uh, I know that we're, we're about quarter till, so I'm hoping to keep a message right about 30 minutes. I told everybody it's just one page, normally I have a page and a little bit more than that, so one page should... Hopefully be right about 30 minutes, uh, keep our attention here. Uh, but we were looking at last uh, Sunday morning, the wise men, many of the songs that we were singing dealt with the wise men coming uh, into uh, Jerusalem. The wise men saw the star, remember, in the west, not in, they were in the east, but the star was in the west, and they made that long journey all the way there to Jerusalem. And we talked about those folks that were there and uh, actually used a little bit of that from that message last Sunday that we were able as a church to put an article in the paper this last week uh, uh, for Charity Baptist Church. And we kind of keyed in on some of that message from last week. So I thank the Lord for giving us all that, how he uh, designs everything and... Uh, but we know that as those uh, wise men were in the east, they had to know something about the star in the west. Or otherwise, why would they go? And we know that there was some scripture that was there that we know from the time of uh, King Balak in Moab. I think it was kind of that general area. And the false prophet Balaam. But God used that false prophet Balaam to give us some of the Word of God. And some of the Word of God that we got from him was something from Numbers 24, 17. And it said, There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. And those wise men knew what the star meant. And they go to Jerusalem, into the west, to seek out the new king that's going to take the throne. And... Some people would, uh, I, you know, we talked last week, how many really wise men were there? We sang some songs this morning that said there were three wise men. Uh, was there three wise men for sure? I don't know for sure. There could have been 100 to 200 wise men. I don't know. Uh, but we know that they came uh, to Jerusalem here to seek the star, or the scepter, the king that would be arising here. But when they first saw that star, and I mentioned last week how I believe it lit up the whole area of Israel or Jerusalem, pinpointing the area where the Lord Jesus Christ was going to be. And then after that, that star went away, and they made that long journey to Jerusalem. And I think uh, probably time frame, very likely would have taken us up to the second Christmas. So as we look at the wise men and they're coming into Jerusalem, then on into Bethlehem, it would be about that second year, second Christmas, not that first one when Jesus was a baby, but Jesus would be about a year old. I, w I was hoping that Caden was here last uh, Sunday, but he wasn't. Uh, because if you can think and you look at Caden here, my grandson that's with us, Caden is almost a year old. 
That's about the age that Jesus would have been when the wise men came to Bethlehem. Right about his size, right there. So you got a picture in your mind there about the size that he would have been. Not only a, an infant baby in that manger, but we know in what we read here in verse 11 that they actually come into a house, not the inn or the place where the manger would be, where a baby would be, but the house. And we also see it's a young child, not referred to as a, a baby anymore. Well, that star when the wise men got to Jerusalem reappeared. And it directed them right to Bethlehem, to the house where the Lord Jesus Christ was. And we know in this account anyway that we only see Mary there at the time. Joseph could have been there. He's just not mentioned in this account right here in verses 11 and 12. But Mary is there and Jesus is there. But that star that shone over that house, when the wise men got there, it disappeared. And what became the focus? But the song that uh, when we were out at Curtin Sandy's, we were kind of going around the table a little bit. Uh, Sandy was asking everybody what their favorite song was for Christmas. So everybody got to share a little bit. And, and I, was sh I shared that a song that we'd been singing this year, the, that beautiful star of Bethlehem shines on. And you know that star that the wise men saw went away, but the beautiful star of Bethlehem became the light. The light of the world. And the Lord didn't want that star to continue on there that somebody might worship it. But they wanted everybody to worship the Lord. And here the wise men come. And I titled our message, The Road Became Different for Them. Their encounter with Jesus changed their life. And the road was different when they left. If you follow along, I'm going to Actually, go back to verse 1 in chapter 2 and read all the way through to verse 12. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they had saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. They departed another way. Well, the first thing I, I think that we need to see is when the wise men came into the house, they saw Jesus, not Mary first. Notice what it says again. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. You know that last, uh, the last uh, song that we had, special, Breath of Heaven, 
Another name for that, I think, is Mary's song. But I actually took out the part that said Mary's song and we put it in the bulletin. Because, you know, I didn't want us to focus on Mary too much. Although we want to focus on Mary a little bit. You know, this time of the season, there are people everywhere that focus a lot on Mary. And Mary was one that God had chosen that would carry the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's heard of the, the words, the Immaculate Conception? And it's always talking about Mary. And we at different times... When we speak with people, we might even use the words immaculate conception. But I want you to not use those words anymore. If you've been using them, if you understand what they really mean, when we say immaculate conception, what we're actually saying is that we believe that Mary was perfect without sin. See, that's what immaculate conception believes is that Mary was perfect without sin, and only Mary that was perfect without sin could have and carry the Lord Jesus Christ who is without sin. You see, the Immaculate Conception is actually a false doctrine. And I grew up with that false doctrine in the church that I grew up in. They really focused in on Immaculate conception. And while I'm focusing on it, I want you to think of this just for a moment. We know the Lord Jesus Christ was without sin and perfect when he was born. But in order for him to be perfect and to be born that way, we can't say that Mary was perfect because the Bible says she's a what? A sinner. Every person born into the world is a sinner. That means Mary is a sinner. And a sinner, Mary, would have to carry the Lord Jesus Christ in her womb. That was perfect. Have you ever thought that means the Lord did not use Mary's egg? You've got you to cross that. So, God did not use Mary's egg, nor did he use Joseph's seed in order for us to have the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the second what? Who knows? Brother Kurt said it. The second Adam. The first Adam God created from where? From nothing. The dust to the ground. The second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, was created and given a body in Mary Absolutely without her egg. Absolutely without the seed of Joseph. That is the only way we could have one that would be perfect without sin. If Mary's egg was involved, it would carry on sin. If Joseph's seed was involved, it would carry on sin. So God right there in Mary's womb gave the Lord Jesus Christ a perfect body without sin. So if you've been saying immaculate conception, what you've been saying is Mary is perfect without sin. She wasn't a sinner. And that's the only way she could carry something like the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's absolutely against what God's Word says. A lot of people focus in on that and begin to focus on Mary and take their eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Mary, right here, those wise men's eyes came and looked upon the Lord Jesus Christ first. I'm gonna, I, I think I'm going to visit a little bit tonight about uh, uh, the first miracle that the Lord Jesus Christ ever performed. Does anybody know where that was at? Say it, Cana of Galilee, the first miracle, and it was a miracle, it was a miracle at a wedding where he takes water and he turns it into wine, but Mary, 
His earthly mother is there. And do you know what she says about the Lord? She, some people want to give her attention while she's there. But she directs the attention immediately to Jesus Christ. And she says, hear everything that He tells you. Not what I'm telling you. I want, the, I want your eyes off of me and you look to Jesus. You look to Him. So Mary's focus was never on herself. Never on herself. But it was always on the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, even later in here it says, she ponders those things in her heart. And I think maybe that's a little bit of... Uh, the song singing to the breath of heaven, that those things that Mary ponders in her heart to be able to speak great things about the Savior. But did we notice the wise men right off the bat focus in on Jesus Christ, not Mary? Oh, I love that this season because I, I, I grew up in a place where he focused on Mary before we focused on the Lord. It was all, all, there was, a, there was an idol there. Oh, Lord, I thank you for freeing me from that idol and bringing me right to where the wise men came, to Jesus, right here. Did you see that they fell down right away and they worshipped Him? My Bible says Him. They worshipped Him, not Mary. They worshipped Him. And I've been thinking about this falling down. There are a couple examples of what this worship is like. Uh, kind of like a, uh, if you think of a, uh, a man and man's best friend, which would be a dog. Brother Kurt gets one of those for his uh, Christmas present. I think they got to go and get. Lee and Shannon just got a new little pup. But a, uh, a dog will come up and lick his master's hand. Or face, right? You guys have probably noticed that a little. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even scratch a little. But a dog will come and lick his master's hand, won't he? Well, this worship, you're kind of thinking about that, that coming and giving your all for the Lord. That, that dog would do anything for its master. And it was right there at his feet. Well, this, kind of these, these men from the east that come here, the type of worship that they would have done when it says that they went out before the Lord to worship Him. We've seen it uh, modeled before, but this style of reverence to the Lord, they, they wouldn't have actually fell on their stomach necessarily, but I think you've seen it if you've looked at some of the Muslim worship. Have you noticed what they do? But they'll be kind of on their, they're on their knees a little bit, kind of sitting back. And then they'll go forward uh, with their hands forward. And notice, what do they do with their head a lot of times? They put it right to the ground, don't they? That's the picture. When it says here that these men from the east came and they worshiped the Lord, that was the position of their body before the Lord when they were going to worship Him. Has any of you ever been in that position before? when you worship the Lord? I, I've told uh, my family at different times, even people here, be careful if the door's locked and I'm in here worshiping the Lord. But at home, if nobody else is home, I, I'll, I won't generally go in that position, but I'll lay before the Lord and I'll just give Him my all and praise Him. And if you've never been in that position before the Lord, that's where these wise men were when they saw Jesus. And I can't help but think this. Have you watched Caden a little bit this morning, anybody? Anybody noticed anything? Or Brother Dick maybe has back there a little bit, being behind, and Carol. If you watch uh, Caden, has anybody heard Caden this morning a little bit? We've heard him. Really. <laughs> oh, yeah, Carol says, yeah, we've heard him. As he moved, I, I thought maybe he even might have had a car for a little bit that I heard running on the floor or something. I don't know what, something was going back and forth on the floor. Oh, keys. So he's making some noise and he's moving around there a little bit. And 
And I don't know if anybody saw this when everybody had an opportunity to practice a little bit this morning when we came in here early. Kelly was actually uh, holding Caden. And while he's in her arms, his head goes back. And you can tell he's ready to just fuss, isn't he? We, that position that he has, we just watched him a little bit with Kyler watching him. We get to see all kinds of those little episodes. You know, it, have, you, have you witnessed maybe your kids at some point in time throwing themselves on the floor, kicking their feet, or just Caden, we've seen him do it. He's been so frustrated at times, he'll put his head back like that and what, he'll just fall down. Well, you think, well, you're, I guess you're going to learn, aren't you? If you fall down and hit your head, you're not going to do that again, are you? Well, I'm thinking of, that is, that is about the size the Lord was right here when the wise men come in and they're worshiping. But he is with Mary, his mother. But my view here is that Jesus is sitting there intently. He's not moving. He's not being disruptive. He's looking at the wise men as they worship Him. And I can't even help but think that maybe right before those wise men got there, Mary had to call Jesus over to where she was. And you know what He would have done? Immediately, He would have come to where Mary was. You see, as we see Jesus right here, even at this age, even from the time we talked about a little bit last week, from being a baby, he was without sin. That means some of the characteristics that we see with Caden, that G Jesus never was like that. Never did any sin whatsoever. But the perfect child. I can see why some of his brothers were, you know, his earthly brothers were a little upset with him and maybe didn't believe in him right off the bat because he did everything right. He was mama's boy or daddy's boy, right? He never got disciplined. He did everything that was right. Where the other ones, what did they do? They were doing things that were wrong and they were getting disciplined and brought back into shape. Jesus never had to be disciplined. Oh, I thank the Lord. Well, that's here the wise men come, and I think the, really the special part is, is the gift that they bring, because the gift that they bring, when we look at the gifts that they are, we have a great understanding of who they understood Jesus to be. So when they come and they worship we know that they've got a great understanding of who He is. And I ask myself, how did they know that? Well, they had the little scripture, probably they got some of the scripture that, that Balaam, the false prophet, God allowed him to, to bring in. But we know there was Jews scattered throughout that area from the captivity. And we know that when they went into captivity, they had the Word of God with them. They did. So the Word of God was still going forward in the captivity in Babylon. And when they dispersed from there, we know that people were studying the Word of God and they knew. So these wise men had to come under some of that teaching at some point in time to know the Word of God. Because of what we see here, the gold. Did anybody, who knows the song? We sang one song, one that I know for sure, that mentioned the gold and it actually said the myrrh and then the frankincense. It went in a different order. Who knows what song that was that we sang this morning? Anybody? You, you remember? Sandy, do you know? Picking them out? Any of them? Brother Kurt? First Noel. The first Noel. It said, right there, it's talking about the wise men, but it, it gave that the gold it said and myrrh and then frankincense. But we got the order in the, the Bible here that says gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I don't think it matters for the song. The significance is what they mean, right? The gold. What does the gold mean? These men had an understanding of what this gold meant when they presented it before the Lord. And it was a symbol of deity and glory. It speaks of His shining perfection and knowing and understanding that the one that was right there was divine. 
That means right there in the house as they looked at the Lord, they knew that He was God in the flesh. God had to leave the glory. was right there in the flesh. They saw. When we look at Caden, we don't see God in the flesh. I see my grandson, Kelly's son, but I see a little sinner that needs a Savior. Needs a Savior. They saw Jesus as God in the flesh. And we ask ourselves as we come and as we're approaching Christmas time, as we are looking at Jesus, do we see him that way too? God in the flesh. In order, in order to have a personal relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, you have got to believe that Jesus Christ is God. You have got to believe that. If you do not believe that, you are not saved. You need to get saved. You need to come to know the Lord. Because there are people that are out there that believe in Jesus. But they say that He's a good man. That He is not God. He is God in the flesh. And in order to believe who He is and to be saved, you have to believe that. In your heart. And then they go on and they, not only do they present gold, but the frankincense. I think this is probably where they get the three wise men. Because there's three gifts. So as we think about it in, my, in our minds, each one had a gift that they presented. That's very likely, isn't it? Or that they together presented each one of the gifts that they had. You know, last week I said uh, it's very possible there could have been 100 to 200 wise men that went and made that journey with them. But we couldn't have got 100 or 200 wise men in the house, could we? Unless it was a big house. And I am, I'm envisioning this house smaller. It doesn't say how big it is, but I'm thinking it's a small house. It would be hard to get that number of people in. But they could have. We don't know for sure. But here's the frankincense. It means frankincense is an ointment or perfume. I know, uh, but the second place I don't really like to go in the mall in Billings is a place that's called Sephora's or something like that. How do you say it? Is it Sephora's? Sephora's. Shelley likes to go to Sephora's. Sounds kind of goofy, doesn't it? Sephora's. Well, here we go trekking to Sephora. I think Kyler, <laughs> the last time we were there, went there too. Well, it's, I don't know if that place has any men's stuff. Does it? Ladies, do you know? I think it's all, it, does it? Kelly's saying, yeah, there's some men's stuff in there. I don't see any men in there, very many. There's a lot of ladies, and there's a lot of ladies that want to come up and help you or let you smell some of the stuff that's in there. But when Shelly goes in there, I, I have gone into the bath and body place or whatever that one's called. And, but this one, I, I, I kind of walked through there and I really felt uncomfortable. So I have now stepped outside and don't really go in there and kind of wander around in a couple of the little areas and wait for Shelly to finish up with, with what she's doing. But you can be close to that place and you can smell the aroma of Sephora's. You can. There is another place, uh, I can't remember what it's called there in the mall, that you can get close to and you can smell odors coming from within that place, that, uh, things that they have in there. And When they brought out the frankincense, there's an odor of the perfume that begins to fill the place where they are, the house, is being filled up with the odor of that frankincense and that Perfume. And what it represents, and what it represented for these men, what they had an understanding of, is that this represented Christ's sinless perfection. Sinless 
perfection. I, th I think I've told you the story that Shelley was helping out at one of the, uh, it was like a food bank that they had in Powell here at one time, at one of the churches. And uh, when she was over there, she's helping stock things. And, and there was a lady that was in there that was the one that was running this place. I don't know if she was talking or if she was, I can't remember exactly what she was doing. But there was a lady that was there that believed in the doctrine of sinless perfection. And she happened to tell Shelley that she believed in that and that that's where she was. That she'd reached sinless perfection in her life. And you know, if Shelley was around her for a little bit of time, she knew right away that she was not sinless. She could tell right away, you have not reached sinless perfection. And my wife would be the first one to say, she's not ever going to reach sinless perfection until she's in the presence of the Lord. Sinless perfection. There's a doctrine that's out there. People believe that they can actually attain sinless perfection. I think one point in time we will when we are in the presence of the Lord. We will be without sin at that time. But this side of glory, we've got the old nature, the old man that's still here. So there will be some avenues of sin. But the Lord Jesus Christ, again, like we said, they saw him as divine, God in the flesh, but God in the flesh that was without sin. He was the only one in any point in time that came and took on flesh that was sinless. Perfect. Sinless perfection was the Lord. Isn't that great what these wise men understood in the gold and what they see in the Lord and the frankincense and the myrrh? The myrrh, I think I love the myrrh the best. We can go into the Old Testament and we can read a little portion out of Isaiah. And Isaiah will talk about gold and he'll talk about frankincense, but he doesn't talk about myrrh. Because he's talking about the Lord's second coming where there will be no Myrrh. And myrrh, myrrh represents, it was a, a bitter herb. Myrrh was a bitter herb. And what it spoke of for these wise men here is that Jesus, who was the king of the Jews, this baby that was God in the flesh, that was perfect, without any sin, was going to have to do one thing. He came to die for the sin of the world. That he was going to have to take upon himself the sins of this world. That's what the myrrh speaks about. The bitter herb. The bitter herb of suffering. He was going to have to suffer greatly for us. And I can't imagine the wise men coming in here, Jesus being about a year old, understanding that he's God in the flesh without any sin, but yet he was going to have to die for the world. The bitter herb. See, we need, those, we need to understand those three things, don't we, if we're going to be saved. If we want a new relationship with the Lord, you've got to understand who He is. That He is God. He is divine. And that He came in the flesh of a man. And He was absolutely perfect. But yet, in that state, in the flesh, the why He had to come in the flesh was to die for you and I. I think a part of the, what uh, Elaine read she talked about the nails, didn't she? That that cross would have to take the nails. The Lord Jesus would have to be nailed right there. That's exactly what these wise men from the east came to Jerusalem to see and believe and come to know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Right there in the house that day when the star was gone but the light of the world 
continued to shine on, they bowed before their Savior for the first time. And you know, those wise men from the, the Gospels for those in the East too, isn't it? The Gospel was for those wise men that second Christmas. They come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. The question would be for each of us, have you truly come to Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, just like these wise men did here this Christmas for them? This was probably the best Christmas they could ever have. I remember the best Christmas that I could ever have was in 1991. December of 1991 is when I came to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. The best Christmas ever. The first Christmas that I knew and understood who Jesus Christ truly was. See, if that's you, this is the Christmas for you to come to Jesus and believe in Him as your Savior. And it's pretty easy, simple. I think that's what I said in the paper. Shelly always, when I put something out in writing, if I have notes here, they don't have to be spelled right. They don't have to have the right punctuation. But when something goes out in the paper, I give it to Shelly so she can read it. And that's something that she, I, I think I had a whole bunch of words. And she said, it needs to be pretty simple here. It's simple. The gospel is simple. It's easy, isn't it? And they had a simple gospel right here in the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. And they believed. And I, I love the last part here in verse 12. It says, being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. They didn't go back the same way. You see, when they came to the life-changing event in their life, they went a different way. They went a different road. They didn't go the same road that they were on before. Life was new for them. It was a new road. So I wonder, with each of us, if we've come to the Lord and we've believed upon Him, are we still going back on the old road? We want to be on the new road, right? A road, the road for them became different in their life. And the road for us, when we know the Lord, should be different for us in our life. We've been changed, transformed, new again. We are new in Christ. And that's the road that we're to be on. That's where we want to go this Christmas, isn't it? We want to go on the same road, take the same route the wise men did. And I don't know where each one of you are. If you haven't come to the Lord, then you need to enter into the house, don't you? You need to look at the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh. And you need to see yourself as a sinner. And Jesus took that sin away so that you could be saved and then that you could leave the house on a different road. This is the season, isn't it? This is the time that free gift of salvation is offered to each one of us. I think many of us have come to believe and trust in the Lord as our Savior. But let's continue on on the road that the Lord has for each one of us. I, you know what I appreciate this morning? I appreciate people coming out of the woodwork here for Christmas to do some specials for us, to do some service here for the Lord because He was pleased this morning with our worship and adoration of Him. You see, we can sit in our pews, can't we? We can stay and not do any work for the Lord, but He wants us to get up and He wants us to be about His work, doesn't He? How did you feel? after you got done with what you were doing this morning for the Lord? Did you have joy in your heart? I think I saw Renee when she walked away. I saw a smile on her face when she was done. She'd serve the Lord, Shannon and Elaine, Shelley and Kelly. There's that, there's that, you feel that? Serving you, Lord. I love you. I'm bound before you. I'm doing your work. The Lord was 
pleased here this morning with what each one of us said. And I thank you. If you don't know Jesus, he's calling you. He is. He's calling you to come and believe upon him. If you do, he's telling you to keep on that road that we're on this morning. What a great road it is when we're serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. He's coming again, isn't he? He's coming again. I hope each one of you come back tonight. We are going to come around and enter this table right here. And we're going to share in communion. We're going to remember many things that our Lord has done for us. It's so important for us to take part of communion together. Not like I, I see Renee here. I know that we've got a background the same, similar for where we grew up. What communion is, it's different from what I grew up doing. That was a sacrament. That was a sacrificing the Lord every week over again. This is a remembrance. Remembering what our Lord has done for us. So we pray that you come back tonight to be able to take part of that communion with us. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. I thank you for your holy written word here, Lord. I thank you for everything that you've given us, Lord. What a wonderful Christmas service, Lord, you've given us right here. Lord, to be able to go forth here in our church family. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for the special service, Lord, that you put in the hearts of your people, Lord, this morning. Oh, it was so beautiful, Lord. I know as we sang, as each one was able to praise you, Lord, in what they were doing, that that sweet, sweet smell of all that worship was going before the throne room of you, Father, and you were well pleased with that. Oh, I just love to elevate the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he is. And I thank you for what we've learned and looked at with these wise men from the east, how they came in to the house, Lord Jesus, where you were. And they understood who you were by that gold, that frankincense, and that myrrh. And they left changed men on a different road. Lord, help that to be us, Lord. Help us to be right there. We need your energy. We need your strength, Lord. If anybody is here, Lord, that hasn't come to know you as a Savior, I pray for them, Lord. I pray that you draw their heart this day, this morning, to you. Lord, to, to, to draw you into the house. Draw you into the house where they can see who you are, just like the wise men were able to. Lord, thank you for this day. Pray that you bless each family, Lord, with all that you have for each one, Lord. Just be with us and guide us, Lord. And we just give you everything here. In Jesus' name, amen.